Everyone's heard of the starving artist, the idea that artists never make any money, and that the price of making art is having to struggle to make ends meet. That becoming an artist is dooming yourself to a life of poverty, all for the sake of your artistic expression. And those myths are exactly what scare a lot of people off of trying to be artists. But despite the starving artist mentality that many members of the public have, plenty of people make a living as full-time professional artists, myself included. I've talked about my work in a few videos, and I mention it a lot on other platforms like TikTok and Twitter, but I've had a lot of folks ask me, both online and in person, how I make money to support myself through my art. And because so many folks are curious, I thought it would make a good topic for a video, so let's dive in. For a bit of background, I went full-time with my art in fall of 2019. This video is actually coming out pretty close to the three-year anniversary of my online store, and I'll have a fun announcement about that at the end of the video. I graduated from art school with an animation degree in 2014, but wasn't able to find a studio job. I moved home and worked a job in food service, check my food service horror stories video for stories about that, then got a desk job working at a company that makes educational materials. I won't say the company name here, but let's just say that if you went to public school in the US, you've heard of these guys. I worked in their testing department and made simple illustrations and graphics for their standardized tests. Basically, if you're taking your state-mandated end-of-the-year standardized test and there's a graph or picture of a gerbil in the test booklet, I drew those. So that was technically my first art job. It wasn't fun or terribly creative most of the time, but it was art and I got paid for it. I even got to do some After Effects animation towards the end of my time there, which was pretty fun. After working that job for a few years, I ended up taking a teaching position in Japan as part of the JET program, and worked as a high school English teacher for two years. And all of these jobs combined eventually led me to pursue my full-time freelance art career. Let me explain. When I first graduated, freelance work was the last thing I wanted to do. I told myself that I wanted a stable job at a studio that paid well and let me do art for a living. I wanted to come into work every day, draw what needed to be drawn, and go home, and get a consistent paycheck for it. That stability was important to me, and all I knew about freelance was how hard it was to maintain a stable income. The thought of living paycheck to paycheck and not knowing where your next job would come from kind of terrified me, and working a studio job seemed a lot more stable, which is kind of funny because now I see professional animators and storyboard artists switching from project to project all the time because contracts only last a few months or years, and then you have to search for another gig to keep yourself afloat. But anyway. I worked my various day jobs for a few years and did my own projects on the side. I started my webcomic cast off while I was working at my desk job, and I started my Patreon after a contract scare almost lost me my job. I'll have to make a whole other video about that debacle because it was complicated, but thankfully I was able to keep that job until I started my teaching gig. After my first year in Japan, I started thinking about what I wanted to do when my contract was over and I moved back to the States. I had signed a contract for one more year and knew that if I wanted to try applying for studios again, I'd need to start working on a portfolio. But then I had the thought. In high school and college, I had done artist alleys at anime conventions a handful of times. Basically, artists would apply for a booth at conventions, then spend the weekend selling prints and products with their art. And I knew some artists who made so much money off of it, it was a full-time job for them. I loved drawing, but over time I had started becoming less and less infatuated with the idea of the 9 to 5 grind. And at some point I just thought to myself, what if I just tried doing that? Starting my own art business would let me draw what I wanted, and I could make money off my own works instead of working at a studio and drawing what I was told to. And my teaching job would get a lot easier in my second year since I could reuse most of my lesson plans. With that in mind, the stars seemed to align perfectly. I told myself that, for my final year as a teacher, I would spend every minute of free time researching and planning my foray into freelance art, building up my online audience, improving my art skills, and absorbing any and all info that could help me reach my goals. Then, in fall of 2019, when I moved back to the States, I jumped headfirst into full-time art, and that's what I've been doing ever since. So now that we know the why, let's talk about the how. What are my sources of income that let me make art my full-time career? I think we can start with the biggest and work our way down. The first and most prominent income source for me is my online store. I technically have two, one on Etsy and one on my own website I made with Shopify. For these, I take my art and make it into products that customers can buy and use. 
Things like keychains, stickers, pins, plushies, and other things. Folks can purchase these items from my store and I pack them up and ship them out. I also make a bit of passive income by selling digital products. Things like custom brushes for digital art programs and PDFs of my book How to Webcomic and my webcomic cast off. Digital products are nice because they're fully passive. When someone buys a digital product from my website, the website sends them the product via email and I don't have to do anything. I definitely want to get into making more digital goods in the future, but for now I'm satisfied with what I have. Now, you may be wondering why I have both an Etsy and a Shopify store. Why not just one or the other? Well, I originally started on Etsy. It's easy to use, has a built-in marketplace, and is pretty easy to set up and start selling with. Plus, they take care of a lot of the trickier things for you, like calculating shipping prices and filing sales tax. But the problem with Etsy is the fees. Etsy really nickels and dimes its users out of money everywhere they can. Say you design a sticker and want to sell it on Etsy. It costs you 20 cents to make the listing and post it on Etsy, and you have to pay that fee again every few months to keep the listing up, which isn't so bad in retrospect. But then Etsy takes another 20 cents every time you sell that sticker. Etsy also takes a percentage fee of the sale, plus another flat fee and a percentage to pay their payment processor. If you buy shipping labels through Etsy, they also charge you a fee for that. The prices and percentages vary by country, but they add up quickly and can really drain your profits if you aren't careful when pricing your items. The final straw with Etsy for me was when they introduced their off-site ads in early 2020. Basically, Etsy pays for ads on sites like Google to market the items their users sell for them. And sometimes this can lead to sales, which is good. But the problem is, if someone buys something from you after clicking on an Etsy ad, Etsy then takes a whopping 15% of your sale on top of the fees I already mentioned. This can add up to almost 25% of your profits. And if you make over a certain amount of money on Etsy, you can't opt out of offside ads. Along with increasing their fees in the last few years, I got so aggravated that I made my Shopify store within six months of starting Etsy. A Shopify store will also have fees, but unlike Etsy, you're charged a flat fee of about $30 a month, no matter how much you make in sales. This is expensive for folks just starting out, but for me, I was losing close to $300 in profits to Etsy fees every month before I switched. So the $30 Shopify cost was pretty minuscule by comparison. Ha, ah, the cost of doing business. Love it. And you may be wondering, why did I keep the Etsy store running even after switching over to Shopify? Well, that's an easy one. To take advantage of their marketplace. On my Shopify store, I have to drive all the traffic to my site myself. The sales I make on Shopify all come from me advertising my store on social media or people finding me through Google searches. But Etsy has a built-in search feature on their website. If someone's looking for stickers, searching sticker will bring up sticker shops from all over Etsy, including mine. Pretty much all the sales I get from Etsy are through people searching their marketplace and finding my products there. I don't advertise my Etsy shop at all. If I advertise my store, I send people to my Shopify store. But I get enough sales from Etsy's marketplace that it's still worth keeping around. So how much of my income comes from these two stores? It fluctuates depending on the month. Summers are usually pretty slow for sales, and I get a lot more sales closer to the holiday season. But in general, I make a few thousand on my Shopify store and a few hundred to a thousand-ish on Etsy every month. The bulk of my monthly income comes from these two platforms. It's not all profit, of course. I have to take some of the money I make and put it back into the business to pay for new products and other expenses I need to keep things running. But overall, this is my largest money-making platform. An extension of my online stores is selling things in person at events, which brings me to source number two, conventions. Every anime convention should have an artist alley. Somewhere independent artists can set up and sell their products while the convention takes place. Attendees can come and shop and the artist can make a good chunk of money in one weekend just from doing these events. I tend to apply to conventions in my home state, Texas, as well as ones in Atlanta because I have a few friends who live out there. But my goal starting next year is to start doing larger out of state shows to broaden my reach a bit. Now, conventions are a mixed bag. They range from one-day local events with only a few hundred attendees to huge Comic-Con-style events with over 100,000 attendees. And your profits from these events will vary based on the number of attendees, the type of products you sell, the quality of your work, and how much you're paying in travel expenses on things like a hotel, transportation, and food for the weekend. Your sales can also be impacted by things such as your display, the location of your table, how many other artists are selling, and even your customer service. 
There's a lot of factors that go into performing well at a convention, and a lot of them you'll have no control over. But conventions are still one of my favorite parts of my job. I love being able to see people get excited when they walk up to my booth and see something they love, having conversations with attendees and other artists, and I'm not gonna lie, coming home after a long weekend with a fat stack of cash in your pocket feels pretty good. On the subject of conventions and the weird things that can impact sales, here's a fun little side tangent. I did Anime Week in Atlanta in 2019, right before the Panini happened, and at the time it was the best con I had ever done. Back then, I was mostly selling stickers and buttons, pretty cheap items at a low price point. But during the Panini, I got into making acrylic charms, which were a higher priced item that sold even better than stickers and buttons. So going into the 2021 show, my goal was to double what I made in 2019, and I had pretty high hopes. And then the World Series happened on the same weekend, literally across the street from the convention venue, and a lot of people who were going to the con physically couldn't because there was no parking because of all the baseball people. It was super slow all weekend, and I went home with the exact same amount of money I had made in 2019. Not bad, but extremely aggravating that the entire weekend was ruined by baseball. I hate baseball now. This is a baseball hater account. Baseballs do not interact. I usually do a few conventions a year, a few smaller local events and a few larger out of city shows. And depending on how well the event goes, I can make anywhere from between a few hundred bucks to several thousand. On average, I'm bringing home anywhere from two to 4,000 per convention. So I try to apply to as many as I can. I don't get into every con I apply for, but the ones I do get into usually go pretty well. And if an event doesn't work out, I just don't apply again next year. I'm still getting my feet wet with conventions. I only got to do a small handful of cons before 2020 happened and cons were shut down for a while. But I've been working on improving my display and products for every show and I'm excited for future conventions. And by the way, I keep a schedule of my future cons on my website. I'll post a link in the description so you can see if I'm coming to a show near you anytime soon. Wink. So that's the money I make from sales and merch, my two online stores, and also selling in person at conventions. Now let's get into the supplementals. As I mentioned before, I have a webcomic called Cast Off. It's been running for about seven and a half years at this point, and I've managed to build up a pretty solid community from it. And there are multiple different ways that that community supports me making the comic. The biggest and most important way is through Patreon. If you aren't familiar, Patreon is a subscription service that lets fans give monthly donations to content creators and get a variety of rewards based on their level of support. For my Patreon, I have four support tiers. The $2 tip jar tier, which gives my patrons access to exclusive bonus content, early access to my YouTube videos, special roles in my community discord, free PDFs of each comic chapter as they're completed, a discount code for my store, and lots of other goodies. The second is my $5 mage tier, which includes all the $2 tier rewards and gives patrons the ability to read cast off pages a month early or approximately eight pages ahead of the main website. This is my most popular tier by far. My two highest tiers are my mail club tiers. $10 a month will get you all of the previous rewards plus two themed stickers every month. And the $15 tier gets you all of that plus a signed and numbered print based on each month's theme. Patrons also get to vote on the theme for each month's mail club and suggest new topics. Plus, I make more bonus content whenever we hit a funding goal, like a new bonus comic or new behind the scenes videos. Patreon is another source of income that tends to fluctuate a bit. My income from Patreon is usually around seven to $800 per month, and it'll go up or down as I gain or lose patrons during the course of a month. People's circumstances can change, and sometimes people will only have the funds to join for a month or two. But I'm still incredibly lucky to have my patrons to support me. Even supporters at the lowest tier help immensely, and my Patreon is the main way I pay for my monthly utilities like power, heating, and water. And food for my kitties, too. But Patreon isn't the only way that I get paid for my comic. I also get some funds every month through Webtoon and Tapas, two webcomic hosting platforms that I post cast off on. On these platforms, I get paid a monthly bonus depending on how many page views I get every month, as well as a small amount of ad revenue. I make about $100 a month on Webtoon through their creator bonus program. This is something creators can start earning once they hit a certain amount of subscribers and monthly page views. I have a similar setup on Tapas, however their program is currently invite only and I'm not allowed to publicly disclose how much I make. The setup is pretty similar to Webtoon though. 
So between my stores, conventions, and my webcomic, that's most of my monthly income accounted for. The rest of these are smaller or more circumstantial, but still beneficial for the extra spending money. The first I'll talk about is Twitch. I do art and gaming streams about three times per week, and I earn money through subscriptions and ad revenue on the platform. I don't make a lot, I'm not a large streamer by any means, but every few months I'll hit the $100 payout minimum and get a check from Twitch, which is pretty neat. I stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5pm CST, and I'll leave a link to my Twitch in the description if you want to come hang out when I'm live. You guys should follow me over there too, by the way, wink wink, nudge nudge, hint hint. <laughs> Next is, surprise, surprise, YouTube. I'll be kind of honest, I stumbled into doing YouTube. I had mostly been using this account for random stuff and stream archives up until pretty recently. But last year I did a live stream of my How to Make Web Comics panel I sometimes run at conventions and archived the stream there. And that video has done pretty well since then. In fact, that video is pretty much the entire reason I got into YouTube's partnership program and was able to start monetizing my videos last year. And once I was able to start monetizing, I thought it would be fun to start making more videos like this one. I had been wanting to do more with this account, but being able to earn some money through it was definitely a big motivator. I'm not gonna lie. I also started doing more stuff with YouTube because I wanted a way to make some extra money that didn't involve a direct exchange of money from fan to creator, like my store or my Patreon. A lot of my audience is on the younger side, and they might not have the ability to, say, join my Patreon or buy stuff from my store. But since I can now monetize my YouTube videos, those folks can still support me indirectly by just watching my videos. YouTube is also a lot more passive than my other forms of income. I still have to make and upload the videos, sure, but it's a lot less intense in the long run compared to packing and shipping orders for several hours every week. I don't make too much on YouTube at the moment. I average about $40 to $50 a month, and I get a paycheck from Google whenever I hit the payout minimum. But I'm hoping if I stay consistent with my uploads here, I can start earning more money from it to support making more and better videos for you all. This is the part where I'm going to suggest you guys subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Just saying, smash that subscribe button and assault that bell and whatever else the big YouTubers say. <laughs> Next up is TikTok which is not super worth mentioning, honestly. The TikTok creator fund is definitely not a reliable source of income for me, and I only make like a few bucks there a month. But I mostly post on TikTok to advertise my store and my webcomics, so eh. But making TikToks helps support me on other platforms, which is weird, but let me explain. A newer income source I just recently got access to is the Instagram Reels bonus program. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty annoyed with the changes Instagram has made to their platform in the last few years. They keep trying to compete with TikTok, and the changes have pretty negatively impacted me and other artists. I have almost 50,000 followers on Instagram, and I'm lucky to get 500 likes on a post. Meanwhile, a few years ago, when I only had a fifth of the audience I have now, I used to get one to 2,000 likes per post on almost everything I posted. I'm still using Instagram pretty begrudgingly just because I have a social media scheduler that lets me post things there automatically so I don't have to think about it too much. And I was just about to quit the platform entirely until they started offering to pay me to post Reels. If you don't know, Reels is basically Instagram trying to be TikTok and letting creators post vertical, short form videos. And they pay you based on how many views you get every month. So as much as I hate Instagram, I make a hundred bucks or so off the platform just by posting recycled TikToks over there, so that kinda evens it out, I guess. I still wish people would actually see the art I post, but ugh, whatever. Okay, I'm almost done, but I have a few more less consistent but still helpful income sources. First up is art commissions. While I know a lot of artists who make commissions a big part of their income, I personally don't do them very often. The thing about commissions is that most of the time, my limited time is better spent working on other projects. Let me explain. If I take a commission to draw someone's character, I draw that character once and get paid for it once. But with things like merch, I can draw a character once and get paid for it over and over and over again every time I sell that piece of merch. So in general, my time is better spent prioritizing making new products over personal commissions. But I do occasionally open commissions when I'm really strapped for cash and need money fast. My most recent round of commissions I did when I had just moved into my house and needed money to pay for a washer dryer. 
and the time before that was when my dog needed emergency surgery. I'm considering opening commissions for VTuber avatars just because they come at a higher price point and I can justify spending time on them. But at the time of writing this, I'm still on the fence about it, mostly because trying to figure out how much to charge is pretty daunting. So we'll see if that ever actually happens. Next on the less consistent side is Kickstarter. I very seldom do Kickstarter projects. I've only done two in my life so far. But last year I did one to fund the printing of my book, How to Webcomic. I originally set the goal at around $2,000 to pay to print a few hundred copies of the book and ship them out to people and ended up making almost $40,000. <laughs> In the end, I was able to pay for 2,000 copies of the book and still had enough left over after fulfillment to help pay for the down payment on my house. I'm running low on how to web comic books at this point and have been itching to do an updated version, so I'm aiming to run a reprint Kickstarter sometime next year, along with maybe actually finally making print versions of Cast Off. It's happening eventually, I promise. I just have to stop procrastinating and get all my stuff together. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on is freelance. When I watch this type of video from other artists, pretty much everyone has mentioned taking freelance work for companies. But personally, I've never done anything like that. I wouldn't be opposed if the work was offered, but it's not something I've ever actively pursued. I've gotten offers in the past, but all of them were either, oh, we'll pay you in royalty once the game comes out, or just seemed like straight up scams. I'm lucky enough that I can make money through my other avenues that I can pick and choose what I work on, which is why I don't have many client horror stories to tell for the channel. Maybe someday I'll have more freelance work to show, but for now, I'm content making art for myself. And that about sums it up. At the time of recording, that's all of my income sources as an artist. It's very scattered, but a good piece of advice is to never lean too hard into one source of income, or you'll end up floundering if you ever lose access to it. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, and that sort of thing. Another thing is that businesses tend to grow and evolve over time, so I'm excited to see where the next three years take me. And we have made it to the outro. Congratulations on watching what is my longest non-gaming video that I've made for the channel, I think? Probably? Maybe? I don't know. Anyway, the art for this video was done for my webcomic cast off September Patreon Mail Club. Gosh, that's a mouthful. This merch set will be available until the end of the month, but there's only a few days left, so if you're interested in getting this print and stickers for yourself, you've only got a couple of days from when this video comes out, so go and snag those before you miss out. I mentioned in the video that my shop anniversary is around this time, so I'm doing something a little bit special. I'm doing a 20% off everything in my store sale from now until the end of the month. That's through the end of September 2022. If you use the code SHOPANIV, I will put that on the screen and also in the description. That will last until basically the end of the day, Friday, September 30th. So now is your chance to grab some stuff. I've also got some new things in the work. I've got a shop update planned on October 14th. It's gonna drop a couple of new things. So be on the lookout for that. Remember to like and subscribe uh, if you wanna see more videos like this as well as all the other nonsense I post. I've been debating changing my Twitch Let's Plays to a different account, but I'm not sure if my subscribers are annoyed by the combination of gaming content and art content. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, I'm genuinely curious. Should I keep it all on one channel or move the Let's Plays to a separate channel? I have link in the descriptions to all of my socials if you wanna know what's going on with me between art videos. And if you like my videos and my other content and you want to see stuff early, a uh, link to my Patreon will be in the description below. You can see stuff early, I get cool stuff. There's a list of patrons on the side. Your name could be here, wowza. Whether you watch this video to learn or whether you were just curious about how I make a living, I hope this video was helpful and I hope you have a good rest of your day.